question. Great question, we get this one all the time actually too. So if you're wondering, you're completely new to hot yoga, then this video is for you. You're gonna make sure you watch all the way to the end and share this information with anybody who might be considering signing up for their first hot yoga class. Hashtag disclaimer, we are probably gonna get some hate comments on it. If you do hot yoga or Bikram yoga currently and you love it and it like speaks to your soul and it is the workout for you, then please be nice and just know that we are here to provide new people with the science and the facts behind what it's like to exercise or do physical movement in a hit or haven't necessarily had the exercise science training that we have both had. So we're here to share with you today the science. Warm up, which means taking a hot bath or sitting in a hot room. And that is a technique that some trainers or physical therapists will use if somebody has an injury and they can't physically warm themselves up from the inside. So passive warm ups can be very good if you have certain conditions or injuries or you know maybe you can't move a certain part of your body they might have you do a passive warm-up so then they can work with you in physical therapy something like that so obviously you would want to be doing those type of things with a trained professional and only if it's recommended and not contraindicated meaning not for you based on your circumstances i will just share my experience with that really quick what ended up happening and this was the turning point for me where i was like no I don't even really enjoy this and I at this point now I have tangible evidence that this is unsafe because I know my body very well. I know my limits very well. I know how to progress into things. That's what I do for a living. And I was in a yoga class and the room was heated probably past 95 degrees and we were working into the hamstrings and I don't remember what exactly we did, but something happened and I didn't recognize it. It was in my hamstring, my right hamstring. I didn't recognize that anything was wrong until 20, 30 minutes after I left the room and all of a sudden I couldn't walk. Started asking my physical therapist friends like, what the heck happened? Like, was it on my walk home or what? And they told me that no, this is actually something that we see quite a bit in our clinics is that people go to these hot yoga classes, they push themselves too far too fast and they don't feel it because their body is so warm externally that they don't actually feel the tears and the muscles. So what ended up happening was that I had torn one of my hamstrings and it took probably eight to 12 weeks for that to actually go back to normal. I had to do a lot of self massage. I had to do a lot of foam rolling, a lot of, you know, light exercise, things like that to get it back to normal. And at that point I would, I just had to hang up the towel and say, literally hang up the towel. It was dripping and swing it. When I know my body and I know my limits, then it's not something that I can ethically. One time one girl came out of the class she was so bright red, so bright red, dripping in sweat and just like had to sit down and I had to get her water. And it was honestly, it was heat exhaustion. And I know that, but a lot of the teachers in those studios don't even know about things like heat exhaustion or heat stroke, which are massive, massive medical emergencies that can potentially be fatal if that person doesn't get medical attention right away. And so good thing, you know, I was there to help this girl, but I remember she, she said she was fine. She was embarrassed and she ended up walking down the hall to the bathroom and literally blacked out in the hallway so hard that she hit her nose on the wall. Did I tell you this story? Mm -mm. This girl blacked out. She was embarrassed trying to get away from us giving her help hit her nose on the wall and ended up getting a bloody nose. And I'm oh, not to scare you or anything, but be careful, be safe, arm yourself with the science, arm yourself with the knowledge, read about it, and then go experience it for, for yourself and see if it's for you. And no matter what you do, have fun doing it and be nice. Obviously there, it's just like with anything, there are good and bad instructors in any type of sport or yoga that you're gonna do but just be aware that some studios have yoga instructors that aren't even cpr or aed or first aid certified at all so how could they know about heat stroke heat exhaustion medical emergencies that could be fatal they don't they just don't and honestly it's in uh, it's unethical and it should be illegal personally it is my i also don't like it but let's first get into the facts when we start talking about hot yoga what we're talking about here is doing yoga in a room that's heated above 90 degrees. We're not talking about heated yoga, okay? This is hot yoga, so 90 degrees and above. Now, when I first was hired at UCLA, they drilled it into our heads that every time you entered a group fitness 
uh, room and you're about to teach a class, the first thing that you have to do for safety reasons is scan the room to check for hazards, to make sure that there's nothing on the floor, there's no wet spots. The number one thing that you were supposed to check was the temperature in the room. So I want to put that out there because that's not that's something that not everybody knows. But the temperature of the environment in which you're exercising can have a dramatic impact on the way that the body responds. And you see this too when people talk about exercising in really hot outdoor climates. So it's always a big red flag if you're going to be working out outside, it's very humid, it's very hot, you want to make sure you have extra cool water there, you want to make sure you take enough breaks, and that you progressively put yourself into those situations so your body has time to adapt. It's almost like altitude training. So that's a really, really important point to understand is that your environment can drastically impact the way your body responds to exercise. And I wanted to read something out of our training manual here because I found this for you and I think it's very important to hear if you're considering doing hot yoga. In the case of activity during heat stress, the body adjusts to exercise with peripheral dilation to enhance the body's cooling mechanism. Peripheral means your hands, your feet, the extremities, the far away parts, not in the core, but down in the bottoms of the limbs. This may, however, limit the return of blood to the heart as blood pools in the periphery. The decrease in venous return or return to the heart would reduce cardiac output if the heart rate did not increase adequately to offset reduced venous return. This explains why heart rate is frequently more elevated during activity in the heat than under more normal temperatures. If heart rate is unable to adequately compensate for reduced venous return, cardiac output will diminish and blood supply to the working muscles could actually become limited. Which, in some cases, can explain why if you're exercising in a very hot environment, your body and the cooling mechanisms are pumping blood and going into the peripheries, so you might experience some kind of blood pooling, which means, guess what's not getting the blood? Heart brain, muscles, working muscles, unless you're actively, you know, working really hard and using those. Basically, when every, all the blood is in your hands, your feet, you get blood pooling, you start to black out a little bit. You start to feel a little lightheaded. You start to get a little bit dizzy. You might start seeing spots, that kind of thing, because your brain isn't getting the blood that it needs. So be very careful if you are in your first hot yoga class. Another thing about hot very hot room. So your body isn't necessarily warming up from the inside, it's having this external force on it, forcing it to combat that heat and you'll probably be sweating a lot and you'll be more thirsty and all of that. So by having the external heat instead of internally heating your own body by moving and, and doing yoga, you don't really need the heat to get warm by doing yoga. You actually can increase your risk of injury because your body is not warmed up itself internally. Does that make sense? You're in an externally heated room trying to force yourself into these poses and you may not be warm yet. And Liz actually had an experience with this herself in a hot yoga class because you can also go too far. You can go too far into a muscle and tear it by being in a really hot to supercharge your life with this question. Should I do hot yoga? Reference, I don't like it. It's too hot, too sweaty. I feel like I'm going to die and I can't breathe. Very hot room. So your body isn't necessarily warming up from the inside. It's having this external force on it, forcing it to combat that heat. And you'll probably be sweating a lot and you'll be more thirsty and all of that. So by having the external heat instead of internally heating your own body by moving and, and doing yoga, you don't really need the heat to get warm by doing yoga. You actually can increase your risk of injury because your body is not warmed up itself internally. Does that make sense? You're in an externally heated room trying to force yourself into these poses and you may not be warm yet. And Liz actually had an experience with this herself in a hot yoga class because you can also go too far. You can go too far into a muscle and tear it by being in a really hot. I personally believe there's too many risks involved. You do not need to go to a hot yoga class to be good at yoga. The point, I really I don't. If you like it and you really like getting that hot and sweaty and people think it like detoxes you, newsflash, it doesn't do. You get all the water flushed out of you and a lot of people often will go home and then have something like heat exhaustion or be really severely dehydrated and rehydrate. And I know that some teachers like a no-no to have water in class, which is like mind-blowingly crazy. Who wants that? For this week, we'll see you next week for a Trainer Tip Tuesday. Bye. Bye. For this week, we'll see you next week for a Trainer Tip.